All right, so today's topic is a very important one. Um, this topic pretty much covers why we do anything in IT security, and that is, what is risk? So let's just go ahead and define it. Um, simple definition is risk is a situation involving the exposure of danger. Well, that's just a general definition. Uh, cybersecurity has a slightly different but very similar definition. The cybersecurity definition is th the potential that a given threat will exploit vulnerabilities of an asset or group of assets, thereby causing harm t to the organization. Now, there's, there's three important points here. Threat, exploit vulnerabilities, and asset. And we'll go over all three of those so that risk makes sense here. So what is a vulnerability? The general definition is it is a weakness that can be exploited. But the cybersecurity definition goes a little more in depth by adding by a threat actor to perform unauthorized actions within a computer system. And so our second point here. An asset, any data, device, or other component of the environment that supports information-related activities. Now, there are some examples I can give, but generally anything can be an asset. So your main example here, data, <coughs> proprietary or otherwise. <coughs> Think sales data, secret formulas, um, like the secret formula to Pepsi or the spices of the kernel's recipe for KFC. Hardware, any of your computers, uh, your, your tablets, your devices that are used on the factory floor, those are considered assets. Equipment, um, network switches, uh, stuff on the factory floor, again, all this is considered an asset. Uh, you can even consider vehicles as equipment. Software, definitely software. Um, think proprietary stuff, stuff you own a license to, um, SAP, things of that nature. People, people are definitely assets. It's hard to think of people this way sometimes, but people are assets. So if someone is threatening an asset of yours or a person of yours that could be considered a risk. And that brings us to threat. A threat is a possible danger that might exploit a vulnerability to breach security and therefore cause possible harm. Um, these threats can come from anywhere. People, nation states, uh, recently discovered exploits, these threats could come from almost anywhere. So how do we find this risk? Well, your first step, what are your critical IT assets? Define them, write them down, um, explain why they are critical. This is gonna help you to start down the path of finding your risk. What are your top five business processes that require those assets? So sales, um, your critical IT assets might be your sales servers, your frontward facing web servers. Um, the business processes that require those assets, sales, finance, accounting, uh, your ability to interact with your customers. You need to define those business processes as well. Step three. What threats could affect the ability of those functions to operate? So you defined your web server as a critical asset. The business process involves sales and interaction with your customer, but that web server runs WordPress. And WordPress has five different add-ons, two of which have vulnerabilities. So you're not just dealing with the WordPress vulnerability, you're dealing with the vulnerability of all those add-ons. And finally, this, brings, this all brings us to the cost. If one or more of these top five processes are interrupted by a threat, 
what is the cost to your business going to be? Remember, in IT security, we're here to protect the business. So this is our main, this is the main thing the business cares about, is the cost. Why are we going to fund you guys? What is the cost if we don't fund you guys? So how do we calculate this risk? Well, there's a pretty simple formula, actually. Risk equals the threat times the vulnerability times the asset. And these can be um, outlined in numbers pretty easily. But there's a couple special corollaries here, or special notes, I should say. Anything times zero is zero. So if you have a threat for a vulnerability and the asset doesn't exist in your environment, well, your risk is zero. Uh, same thing for if you have a threat for a vulnerability that you've patched on assets that are in your environment, vulnerability is also going to be zero. Um, as well, your vulnerability exists on plenty of assets, but there's no threat to exploit it. You, you've got it properly maintained. So that, that would also be a zero risk. And risk implies uncertainty. If you are certain that something is going to be uh, hit by a vulnerability or a threat, then it's not a risk. It is a known attack. I mean, you're not accepting the risk at that point. You know something's going to be hit. You'd be stupid to let it be hit. Um, so some examples of this. Data loss. So theft of trade secrets cause you to lose business to your competitors. Um, theft of customer information, that's going to result in a loss of trust, customer attrition, and possibly regulatory fines. Um, system or application downtime. If a system fails for its primary function, like I said earlier, customers aren't going to be able to place their orders or interact with your web servers. Uh, employees aren't going to be able to log in. Legal consequences. There are almost always legal consequences for sales uh, in customer facing data, especially with the EU privacy laws, uh, HIPAA, PCI DSS. There are several other compliances. Uh, you can bet that there are most likely going to be legal consequences. So for further information, RSA actually has a great white paper on uh, cyber risk appetite. Um, I won't go over accepting risk or when to accept risk or any of that in this video, but uh, their paper does touch on it. ISC Squared, which administers the CISSP, which I'm currently studying for, uh, also has some great information on cyber risk. And of course, Wikipedia. It's the compendium of human knowledge. Come on, people. Why not use it? And that concludes today's topic.